Um, obviously, uh, what are your thoughts about Fury and this idea that you might be sparring with him? Yeah, I just think it's all for the experience at the end of the day. Like, what I learned from myself and who I am, I make a mistake once, I don't make it again. So, with Fury sparring him the first time, it may be, for my benefit, I might go in there and just bat a Fury around the ring, or he might bat me around the ring. And if that is the case, I know I can take my notes and go back when I'm ready to fight him and correct all my wrongs. So, Everyone's like, you wouldn't do it, but no one knows how my brain works. Everyone talks from their own experiences, and I can only talk from my own. So when I say I'll go and spar Fury, it's because I have a plan in my mind that no one will really understand. So your message to Fury then going into next year is what? Uh, if you want the help, I'm always here. And if it fits in with my schedule, I'll definitely be a support to make sure that you bring that WBC championship back to England. And when you finally get in the ring with him? I'll beat him. <laughs> Wow, so we just heard Dare from the landlord himself smoking up the place. Tyson Fury, I've just spoke to a representative from the Fury camp. They said that after Fury heard about this, his knees started bow jangling together. Yeah, but allegedly, after Fury left the room after watching this video, that his maid had to come in and wipe off some. I don't know what, listen, I wasn't there, but I'm just saying the maid had to come in and wipe an orangey yellow substance off the floor. It stank as well, apparently. It smelled, all I can say is, it was orangey yellow, and apparently it smelled like public urinal. You man can decide what that is, how much, oh, I wasn't there. I'm just telling you, man, what happened. Anthony Joshua, it's a shame, though. One thing I will say is, this was interesting, but I wish AJ had a road with it a bit more, in as much as he says that, listen, if I go, if I do spar for it, I might go in there and bash him around the ring. I wish he'd have kind of left it there or expanded on that Conor McGregor style kind of thing. Instead, he he kind of walked it back. He said, "I might go in there and bash him up, but he might bash me up." No, you know, you know, <laughs> you know, if you ain't gonna bash no one up. Listen, like I pointed out the other day, Anthony Joshua went in there, 2011, only been in the sport for three years, and he whooped Fury all around the ring. That's not for me. Like I said, the same way I just gave you the, the quote from Fury's mate. That wasn't me telling you that. Fury himself said, Oh yes, Anthony Joshua. He whacked me around the ring. A good man. A good fighting man. Uppercut. Oh yes. He hit me right on my chops for a big uppercut and a big left hook. Oh yes. A true fighting man. A hard punching man. A, 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 Anthony Joshua. He punches as hard as my brother Tommy Fury this weekend. A good fighting man. A proper hard man. Yes. Oh, Anthony. So you heard it there again. I replayed the interview for you. Fury gassing AJ all the way up. And I wasn't there. And that's the great thing about not being there. Don't take my word from it. AJ didn't tell, didn't tell nothing. Fury talked about how... Fury talked about the process of how AJ victimised him. Yeah? And we know Fury... Fury comes out and t calls a spade a spade. He told you, listen. He told Dave Price and Tony Bellew. Whatever. David Price, you're a plumber. If David... And he even said, this, he even said this. Listen... If AJ had been in there with Dave Price, he would have knocked Dave Price out because Dave Price ain't got a chin. Yeah? So we know Tyson Fury don't hold no shots back. And that happened in 2011. And I, I, I did actually say to you, man, listen. And that's why when this these sparring rumours came out, I said to you, man. AJ, if you hear this video, please do not go in there and whoop Fury all around the ring. I'd made this... That was my. That was one of the key... That was one of the key things I mentioned in the whole... In this whole AJ Sparring and Fury situation. I said, AJ, do, if you go there, go there, take all the power off your shots and just kind of play around the place. And just throw a little slappy right hand around. That's what you need to do. Don't go in there and stick it on him. Because if you do, you, the way you, you know you've been trying to beg for this fight for the last four years, it won't be happening. Not even a bit. And that's why ultimately, I don't think it's a good idea they do spar. Because two big men... Two, two big men have got egos. Number one, I wouldn't. I actually want. Part of me wants Fury to win this Fury versus Wilder fight, just because I want to see. I'd love to see Wilder get beat up to be the truth be known. That's one thing I do want to see. I either want to see. To be fair, I guess I'm kind of a neutral fan. I either want to see. I want to see someone get beat up. Basically, I want to see either Fury knock Spark out or Wilder get beat up. But then again, if I could choose, if I had a button to push, I would push the Fury Maul in Wilder button. I'd love to see that because that. Do you know how much content you could make from that? Talking about how wild you just got stopped by a man with no power. Them videos would be priceless. I'd love to be able to report on that. I just would. About Wilder getting beat. And I think Fury can do it. If Fury goes in there, 200. Like, do you remember when Fury was preparing for the Wilder versus. Sorry, for. Was preparing for the David Hay fight? 
back in 2000 and was it 2012, 2013? About around that period. Do you remember when you were preparing for that? They had a Sky. In fact, anyone who hasn't watched that, it's a wicked interview. Go and watch the Sky. Sky Sports, and yeah, it was a Sky Sport Tyson Fury and David Hay interview. I think Johnny Nelson was doing the kind of it wasn't a, it wasn't a behind the gloves. It was they were sitting in this like little anyway. You can find it. The fact of the matter is that Tyson Fury would bash Wilder all around the ring. That's the one that needs to come back, and that's the one that's kind of disappeared since 2015. In fact, since 2013, that that one who was going to fight David Hay, that's the real one. Ever since then, I think I got to blame Peter Fury to an extent. Peter, Peter Fury took the fighter out of uh, took the fighter out of Tyson and made him hella boring and hella just running around the place. To be honest, yeah, it makes you help you win fights, but you've got to mix it up more at heavyweight. You've got to mix it up more. Yeah, that's what you've got to do. But the fact of the matter is, Tyson Fury came out and said to David Hay, and that's why David Hay bottled it. David Hay didn't want it because David Hay had flashbacks. He thought, you know what? He had flashbacks. He thought, you know what? We all remember how Vlad, how Vlad did David Hay. Vlad did David Hay so wrong. He was after the fight. He was on there pointing at his big toe. Yeah. What Fury needs to do in this fight is come in there with that same attitude he gave at David Hay. David Hay, you're getting it. I am two hundred and eighty pounds. Oh, I am two hundred and eighty pounds of inside fightingness. That's what he needs to do. March forward and way all over. Deontay Wilder's little skinny frame. People don't really appreciate this whole weighing over people. And I've told you, man, already, if I ever do a boxing event, I'm going to demonstrate. One of my key things is going to be, even if I'm the smaller man, I'm going to show you, man, what I mean by weighing on people. Just get, make, getting it ugly and weighing all over them. Yeah? That's what needs to happen. Fury go in then. To be fair, Fury's the one who taught me how to do it. Look at, look at Fury versus they, uh, Cunningham. What did he do? He was getting outboxed, getting put flat on his back, then what did he do? He he put all that goofy Peter Fury stuff away and went went to work and stuck it on him. And and what happened then? A few rounds later, he's on his back. You know, he's on his back looking at looking at the stars. And that's supposed to show you can try and do all this goofy boxing business. It's all well and good. You may you may or may not win a few fights doing it that way, but there's no guarantee there. If you go in there and say, Deontay Wilder, I am two hundred and eighty pound. We already know John Fury's coming and said he's gonna be heavier. Yeah, come in there, 280 pounds, Wilder be 220, go in there and use, no, there's no point in being 280 if you're going to be just running around the place. It makes no sense at all. Go in there and them little skinny st stick legs, how are they going to hold him up when you're on top of him, weighing on him and digging into the body? We already know Wilder ain't got no, ain't got no inside fighting game. Anyway, I'm, I've given Fury the game plan now. If he chooses to go in there and try and be, try and be Mr. Ali 2.0, then he'll find out and we'll get knocked out. Anyway, back to this AJ point. AJ, do not, you know, I think it's a bad idea, it's the whole sparring business, because you, if you bash him up any more, he's already got PTSD from the first one in 2011, he's just about, he's not even, I can't, be, I can't even lie, he's not even got over that, because if he had got over the 2011 session, he'd have been signing a fight already, I just don't get it, because historically speaking, Fury should be, Fury's a better man than Wilder, because Fury has actually been in there with Vlad, he's been in there with Wilder, them two men have got power. He's been in there with Chisora. Three people, in fact. And Chisora twice. Wilder, show me one person Wild, Show me one person on Wilder's record that's got that's, that's anything like Derek Chisora. Name me one. Just one. None. And that's the long and the short of it. Name me one person who's like Vlad. Name me one person like Wilder. There you go. So what I'm confused about, and that's why I'm sure that AJ really did, did give him the work in 2011. Because you've got to ask yourself, if Fury was prepared to go in there, with Vlad, prepared to go in there with Wilder, prepared to go in there with Chisora. But wait there, all them fights combined, Wilder, Chisora, and the Klitschko fight, add all them fights up together and times it by two in terms of the amount you got paid, that still wouldn't equate the amount you'll get paid versus AJ. So what's stopping Fury? For one fight, you can get paid more than your last three biggest fights. Double, sorry, double your last three biggest fights. What's that about? And I'm telling you now, it's the 2011 sparring. And also, I think psychologically speaking, Fury's, he doesn't want to give up that bragging right. He knows he's been talking a whole gang of ish this whole time. Oh yes, Anthony Joshua, he's tall stiff, he's tall stiff. Oh, he's a big bodybuilder. I'll fill him right in. Oh, oh I'll put his quant right in for him. You've heard him saying all this stuff for years, and I think what happened is, he'd rather, I think Fury would honestly rather retire 
and be able to keep talking about, oh, AJ got the belts out the bin and AJ never beat the real champ. I think he'd rather do that than roll the dice, get his head boxed off, and then for the rest of his career he'll be known as the man who talked the whole gang and got beat up. Because the thing about the Fury fans is, and, and what Fury knows this already, Fury's not stupid to his credit. He knows that the, you Fury fans, are, you're fickle, yeah? When you're, you're all talking about how AJ's a bodybuilder and all this kind of stuff, but the minute Fury's head rattles off the canvas and AJ deals with him, I'll go to my comment section. Honestly, I can, I can just imagine Fury versus AJ fight, yeah? The whole build up, the three months. Oh, YB, you said AJ can box. Oh, AJ's, AJ's going to get a boxing lesson and oh, this is going to happen. His quants going to be getting punched right in. I'll be the same as the Ruiz. I'll be getting my comment section will be full of it. Trust me, what Fury's head. Fury's lifeless body, ba Fury's lifeless, <laughs> Fury's lifeless clart rattles off the canvas, and his eyes are rolled in his head, yeah? Fight's over. YB makes a video, 24 hours later, comment section, Oh yeah, YB, yeah, see, we told you, lad, yeah, you was right, yeah, we was right, YB, I told you. What? <laughs> Where's all you goofy fans gone again? You man was talking about how people were going to get a boxing lesson. But listen, what it comes down to, AJ... I can I can already can hear the snare in his voice. He said, "Listen, I might go in there and bust him up." And that dissentable attitude. If you're gonna spar Fury, Fury needs confidence. Yeah, we already know he's taking padding out of gloves. He, the last thing he needs is being bashed up by the best heavyweight in the last 30, 20 years. Seriously, the best heavyweight in the last 20 years is Anthony Joshua. That can cat. That is categorical now. That is categorically cool now. Yeah. Who else? Name me one other person. Lennox, in my opinion, he doesn't count as the last 20 years. Because he's more like the last 30 years. But even then, not being funny, when you compare resume for resume, AJ's uh, AJ's above Lennox Lewis to 24 fights. That's just the way it is. 20, to 24 fights, AJ has accomplished more. And also, AJ after AJ's first loss, he didn't run away for three years and fight loads of warm-up fights like, like, like Lennox Lewis did. He got straight back in, which is brownie points in terms of the ranking system. But listen, that's that done. I do want to see, uh, it's interesting because we we do see little bits shine through from AJ. I might go in there and bust him up. I just wish, I wish he'd be more, I just wish he'd carry it a bit more. You know what I mean? Like, clearly you've got that in your head. Just don't, don't you don't have to walk it back. Yeah, I might, I might go in and bust him up, be simple as that. If I, if I choose to go in and bust him up, I'll bust him up. It'll be, and that's the end of that. There ain't no, I know what he's trying to, he's, obviously, naturally he's very humble. So he's, he says, he'll say one thing and then walk it back. To neutralise, to neutralise the statement out. But financially speaking, I know AJ is he's not in love with money. But listen, it's about maximising revenue. And I've always said this: if AJ wants to maximise revenue, the talking game, you've got it. It's sitting there. It's it's for, it's for the taking. You don't have to be, you don't have to be obnoxious or like like McGregor. Like look at McGregor. Look at McGregor's early days. He wasn't. He was creative with it, and it wasn't. It wasn't just stupidness. It wasn't just cheap little. It wasn't personal digs. He was talking about listen. Same thing AJ, AJ said here. I might go in there and bash him up. That's what essentially. I think McGregor was more refined with it and more plentiful. But still, he'd talk about what he's gonna do in the ring. He weren't talking about people's wife. He weren't talking about nothing else or religion. He was talking about what he's gonna do in the ring. And that stuff, you can't go wrong with that because it's not personal. You're not, you're not, you know what I mean? It's you, you turn the truth. This is what's going to happen. Yeah, Aldo's getting slept in the first round, and and when you do that, that's what gets people. The people want to see that turn to reality, and that's how I think AJ can go from the level he is now to that Floyd Mayweather billion dollar level. Because look at Mayweather. Mayweather's another one. He had a big mouth, but maybe AJ, AJ doesn't want to do that. And that's up to him. I'm just saying. I know he's he's got it. He's got that. He's got that part in him. He's, he's, he just has, and I think I think that's where he can potentially. Take that to the next level, because especially for these fights coming up, you know, assuming they're going to come up, Wilder, Fury, Ruiz, Free, Dillian White. Do you know what I mean? Imagine that. Get all that stuff kind of bubbling up. That would be wicked. But yeah, Fury, AJ. If you do go, if you do spar together, it will be interesting to see actually what happens now. If Fury will respond to this, but to be fair, like I said, AJ, AJ did walk the comment back, so it's not like. Like he sent, he, he left it as a listen. If I could, if I do spar Fury, I'm gonna whack him up. He did kind of say it could go either way, and I do appreciate actually. And that's why I write about AJ. He said here that if Fury did beat me up, 
that's gonna the reason he wants a spa fury and we knew this from the start the reason he wants a spa fury is because he wants to download the information and get a one up he probably shouldn't have said that though but then again who, listen fury i don't think fury really means it anyway but let's see hopefully i don't think it hurts either of them sparring i think it will help as long as AJ goes in there and doesn't go too hard on Fury, that will benefit Fury. If he goes in there and whacks him up, and peop and Fury's train has to start taking padding out of gloves to get him some confidence, then it ain't going to be a good look. But they're, they're two professional men. Let's see how it plays out. Anyway, lastly, big love to my dog, Donnell, to Don Richardson, for coming through and sponsoring your boy on the Patreon. Anyone else who wants to receive daily exclusive content, live stream, interact with the YB, patreon.com slash the YB. Big love.